Stanley Kubrick The Exhibition has been on my radar for a while and I only found out recently that it was now actually here in the UK. Excitement infected me. I booked a time slot and went. Stanley Kubrick's films have influenced, inspired and disturbed me forever. There was a time when A Clockwork Orange was banned in the UK and I went down to Camden Market and dropped 15 quid for a bad salt and pepper copy which made the anticipation of really experiencing the film even more desperate. The Royal Shakespeare Company put on a stage adaptation of A Clockwork Orange with actor Phil Daniels. It was a memorable night out. You too did the music and I can't find it anywhere. Apart from A Clockwork Orange, films of Kubrick are like are Eyes Wide Shut, which has a foreboding energy to it that no other film has. Full Metal Jacket, where you can witness Vincent D'Onofrio in an early role. And The Shining, which is, in my opinion, one of the greatest horror films ever made. And knowing just how old that film is just reminds me how Stanley Kubrick was so ahead of the times. Look at 2001 A Space Odyssey. That film came before Star Wars and Alien. In the lobby of the Design Museum, before the Stanley Kubrick exhibition's entrance, was the Durango 95, the futuristic car that Alex and his droogs drove, looking to do some ultra-violence in a clockwork orange. I stood and stared. Walking on the Overlook Hotel's carpet from The Shining, I was allowed in early although my allocated time wasn't for a while. An immersive welcome with all these screens, I stood and watched. Then joining the queue, the film history of Stanley Kubrick begun. There's so much to read, watch, listen and take in and after over two and a half hours my brain had become totally Kubrickarian. I saw a switch panel, an actual prop from 2001 A Space Odyssey. I stood, I stared, I got lost remembering the film. Film posters, camera lenses, letters and scripts, this endless collection kept in perfect condition. They have his director's chair there. I stood, I stared and thought how important this filmmaker is. The actual Born to Kill helmet from Full Metal Jacket was in front of me. Incredible. Props that were copies were clearly marked as copies and original props were clearly labelled as used in the films themselves. I'm not interested in all of Kubrick's films, the ones I haven't mentioned, though I totally respect their value and importance. I do think that Kubrick's film Lolita, which is about a grown man obsessing over a 12 year old girl, is a bit weird. Why would anyone want to make a film like that? It's a bit too seedy and unsavoury for me, so I skipped that exhibition section. Stanley Kubrick loved editing his films, and seeing his setup for editing was quite something. It's where he got rid of what he didn't want. The eyes wide shut section is really interesting. Stanley preferred to film inside a studio instead of outside on location. He felt as a director making that trust and connection with actors takes time. And then for someone unknown coming into the film's creative space or loads of people watching behind a barrier can make him and the actors feel uncomfortable. What I loved about the clockwork orange display was the letters of complaint at the time. Again, beautifully preserved. One particular individual loved films and boasted about the films they've seen, but was very concerned and angry to watch a film where the main character, Alex, actually enjoyed dishing out the violence. Wonderful stuff. These days, if you complained about a film, no one would respond. No one would give a toss what you thought. But way back then, written communication was read and responded to. My reaction to the shining section of this exhibition is that it needed to be much bigger. However, what was on display satisfied my curiosity. A copy model of the hotel maze was on display and was beautifully created. Jack's typewriter was seven inches in front of me in a glass box. I stood. I stared. I couldn't believe it. I texted a few mates there and then. And then their oh my god responses came flooding in. 
Next to the box with the typewriter was pages and pages of the typed All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Kubrick was so involved with the different language versions that he got hands on with the voice casting. He wanted to make sure everything was correct. He even had the typed All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy typed in different languages. And it was all there on display. I had no idea he did this. I was impressed. Above me slammed into the wall was a couple of axes that Jack Nicholson used, the actual axe props. Like some ancient religious horror ritual that only I knew about, I touched the axes and believed Nicholson's talent moved from the axe handle into my soul. That moment was worth the ticket price alone. The creepy twins' real costumes were on display and Danny's Apollo jumper. And then I saw Wendy Torrance's actual knife. I stood. I stared. I was in the shining heaven. The final section of the exhibition was all about 2001 A Space Odyssey. And what made me speechless here was the actual gorilla suit used by the main actor at the beginning of the film was on display. And the fur hadn't deteriorated during all those years. I was amazed. And there was a brilliant and intimidating copy of HAL 9000 computer with surrounding screens which was uncomfortable to stand in front of for all the right reasons. I explored this exhibition for a long time. I read so much about Kubrick's work and you know what? I believe this exhibition is important for creative people to visit whatever genre you're into. You see, Kubrick made films the best they can be, far away from the box office cash obsessions of today. Stanley Kubrick's time was before the conveyor belt of the fast food films you're used to. And this display doesn't offer anything about Stanley Kubrick outside of his work. What was he like? And thankfully I can fill that gap in for you by suggesting you watch the Tom Cruise interview which reveals what a kind, considerate man Stanley Kubrick was. The link to that interview is below this video. There's one thing about the Kubrick exhibition that will stay with me more than The Shining. Something I did not expect. Something that disturbed me, that thrilled me and made me freeze standing still for ages. In a dark corner of the section for eyes wide shut, there was the actual Venetian masks from the production on display. At this point during my time at the crowded exhibition, no one was near me. These masks are terrifying in real life. They reminded me how terrifying those scenes and music are when featured in that film. Finally, I'll tell you a story about Kubrick that no one else has told you, and it's not included in this exhibition. June Randall worked as continuity for The Shining. Stanley Kubrick asked her to type, All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And every time she showed Kubrick... He wasn't happy and said he can't use it and made her type it again. He made her work on it for six hours and she finally threw the typed paper at Kubrick in anger and then he said to her, that's the one I'll use. Kubrick wanted her anger to filter into her fingers, slamming typewriter keys so he could see her frustration in the ink. <laughs> 